I think it was Monday or Tuesday, I got a call from somebody who said, Doctor, I lost my child. Mm -hmm. Somebody else said, oh, I got laid off. I just heard this morning that Microsoft handed out 150,000 pink slips. You don't have to choose to listen. I'm just, I'm just here telling you because, Amen. because the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want for any good thing because I know in whom I have believed. And this is where I started getting a little bit emotional. I started crying because I started rehearsing all the wondrous things that my God has done for me personally. See, God said that heads were going to roll. God told me to warn you no matter where you are, who you work for, to, to, be, to, to beware. Now I want you to go with me to Isaiah 66. Some of you think you're on Route 66 and you're going to be okay. <laughs> just, just make it to what's at the end of Route 66. Anybody? California? Yes. Okay, that's what I mean. Okay. So, watch, watch. Verse 4. Come on. So I also will choose their delusions and mockings, their calamities and afflictions, and this is, what I, this is what I underline in my Bible. And please, because I know you might be thinking, man, I should have gone, I sh shoot, I should have stayed, I should have gone to this church because they were preaching about having your best life today. How to get your blood. That, this message is all about having your best life today. But I just want you to know that I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're Donald Trump. I don't care if you're Queen Elizabeth. Out. I don't care if you are the Vatican. That's right. Amen. That seemingly has had more money than all of Europe put together. But I heard last week they were down to like 70 million or something like that. Something ridiculous. Oh, how the mighty have fallen, the word says. But watch this. And this is the word for you here this morning. He says, and I will bring their fears upon them. Remember Job? Remember Job? Yes. Nobody wants to walk down the path of Job. And I told God, I said, God, God, don't, please do not ask me, don't, don't take my babies. You can take all the other stuff, but don't take my, just don't mess with my children. And of course, Yahweh in his mercy <coughs> has been merciful. Man. Not because I told him, not because I got in his face, not because I was scared, but, but I recognize that in, in, the book, in the book of Job, his life, the Bible says there's one little key scripture because so many people was in, but he was such a righteous man. He was known throughout the land as being a person who did everything right. Amen. But the Bible says that he made a statement. He said, the thing that I feared the most has come upon me. <laughs> so God says, I will, I will, what he says, he says, I will bring their fears upon them. Verse 5, hear the word of the Lord, you who tremble at his word, you brethren who, the, the brethren, your brethren who hate you. Did you notice it said brethren? Sometimes it's going to be Christians. Sometimes it's going to be Bible-thumping people. Those, and sometimes it's going to be your own family. Come on. He says, the brethren who hate you for my name's sake, he says, let the Lord be glorified. Yeah, yeah, Hallelujah. Yeah. That we may see your joy because it is they who shall be put to shame. Yes. Now, if you do the things that... See, some of you are causing... Oh, let me read some more. Okay. Before Zion, verse 7, travail, she gave birth. Before her pain came upon her, she was delivered of a male child. Who has heard of such a thing? 
Who has seen interrupting patterns? Who has heard of such a thing? Okay, church. Who has heard of such a thing? We, we are seeing unprecedented. We are in the middle of July, and we have 65 degree weather in Texas. Who has seen such a thing? The reporters began to report of this tragic. Who has seen such a thing that two Malaysian air flights within just a couple of months of each other? One woman had family on both of them. Oh. Well, that's over there. Thank God it's not American Airlines. Thank God it's not Southwest. Oh, who has ever heard of such a thing? Amen. We're seeing some stuff happening. The, the, the majority see it is happening not in Africa. It's happening in America. Amen. There are floods. There are devil. There are sinkholes. There's stuff happening. Well, it's just because we the news is more folks. Stuff is is starting. No question about it. You don't have to be a, a Zionist, a millennialist, a post, a pre, or whatever to know stuff is happening. There is stuff stirring, and the more it stirs, the more we as God's people, we gotta hold on because you might be the you you are the key. Because there's some dreams, there's some blessings, there's some babies that are being birthed. And watch what this says. And I'm talking about a dream, a baby, of a, a, a gift, or a, or, a, or a son, or a baby itself. But, but, but babies of, of visions and, and, and businesses and, and, and things that God wants to bless us with. And watch this. It says, who has seen such a thing? Verse 8, who has heard of such a thing? Who has seen such things? Shall a, a land be born in one day, or shall a nation be brought forth in a moment? We're living in those days, church. Okay? For as soon as Zion was in labor, she brought forth her children. What did I tell you about these 52 days? What would normally take years, years will happen. God will do it in these 52 day season. Okay? Shall, watch this. Shall I, shall I bring to the moment of birth and not cause to bring forth, says the Lord. Shall I who carries, who causes to bring forth, shut the womb, says your God? See, God showed me that, that with this that some of you are, are causing your wombs to be shut up because you have not listened, you have not answered when the Lord called. Verse 4, he said, I call on you. When, look, read, read the rest of it. It says, when I called, no one answered. When I spoke, they did not listen or obey. But they did what was evil in my sight and chose that, it, that in which I did not delight. He has spoken and you have not listened. Amen. And you have not obeyed. The things that you fear will come upon you. The fact that you choose to ignore what a messenger has to say will not make it go away. Amen. It does not make you not have culpability. Okay? Uh, uh, you cannot escape God's arm of justice. See, this is not, this, listen, this is not meant to incite you into fear. It is meant to warn you. See, he's interrupting our patterns. This is a Interruption of your current viewing, whatever. This is a bulletin report from the Lord. It's a warning. And it doesn't matter if you well, I'm going to change the channel. Well, guess what? ABC, CBS, all of them are because it's the world news. It's what's happening at the moment. You cannot escape it. Try if you want. You cannot make it not be. You can turn off the TV, but it's still there. You can change the channel, but it's going to be there. 
Because it's the word of the Lord. Right. Now watch this. Elisha, the young prophet to be, was out plowing the fallow ground. He was sowing in a time of famine. I believe part of the reason that he was chosen was because of his faith. That's right. He had great faith. He was out in the middle. Now some of you, listen, you, it takes faith. It takes faith to tithe. It takes faith to, to sow. It takes faith to give bursaries. It takes faith to believe God for a healing, for a miracle. It takes faith to take medication to believe in because you can take the medication and your brain can literally thwart even with medicine. It can literally because that's the reason that sometimes the placebo does just as good as the medication. He, the Bible says that he was plowing the ground with 12 plows. Most people would have given up and held on to their plows and their oxen, put them away until the rain comes. Because that is the natural tendency when it comes to fear of lack. Now watch this. I saw a post on Facebook. Somebody posted something that T.D. Jakes was preaching. And the, 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 the main post said, the famine is over. And I was so excited and I got I immediately claimed it for me, for my family, and for, for my church. Amen. And I was so excited because it seemed like a confirmation to what I was preaching about, the famine with Elijah and Elisha. Amen. Then I heard Holy Spirit say, don't get mad, but the famine is not over. This is what I heard Holy Spirit say. The Holy Spirit said, the drought is over. Amen. See, see it's, 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 it's Oh, my. We get so excited about The famine is over. Repost, repost. Like, like, like. 5,000 likes. But the drought, who cares if the drought is over? Our legs still aren't filling up. We still, we still got dried up. And da, 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 da. The drought is over. You've got to see the sea. I thought to myself, the the same thing, famine and drought, it's the same thing, no. See, the Holy Spirit showed me the first, first thing that happens, the rain comes down and begins to water the earth. Yeah. Then the sower has to get a sowing. Amen. 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 You see, we, want, we just want to skip straight through to the famine is over. Do you hear what I'm saying? Amen. Okay, see, so, so then a few months later, the harvest will come forth. Amen. And I got excited over the harvest. And the Holy Spirit said, after the harvest comes the harvesting. Yeah. Harvesting. Amen. Harvesting. Harvesting. Amen. Then the famine is over. Amen. Then we declare the famine is over. Yes. You see, we want to jump right to famine is over when we are several natural steps of obedience before that. We've got to follow those. Remember that God was feeding Elijah with food that ravens were bringing him. God makes provision for us no matter how bad the situation. Yes. He's a good God. He's a merciful God. He's a gracious God. Even, even in lean times, Pammy, when, when, when you didn't know, is Luis going to get paid? Yep. Remember, you came to me and you said, Dr. Police, just pray because things are... You made it through. God brought you through Man. that drought, that seeming Man. time of, of famine. But you yeah. have... During that time, did you stop tithing, Pammy? During that time, did you stop sowing seed? No, in fact, you sowed a bunch, you sowed a five thousand dollar seed in the midst of some of the craziest times in their lives. And what happened? God came forth because it is God that waters. That's right. He's the waterer and he's the Lord of the harvest. That's right. And then he allows us to come in. And sometimes he's so good that even in our times of, of lack, he allows us.
See, God's a gracious God and looks, looks out for us even when things are tough. God was making provision for Elijah in the midst of his depression, his exhaustion, his disillusionment, and his I want to give up attitude on his state of mind. He was, he was interrupting the patterns of his life. And God will do the same for any of his children. But just because you're going through a difficult time in your life does not mean the devil has gotten the best of you. Some Christians think that they are better off than others because they are in a time of harvest theme. Did you hear what I said? They may be in a time of harvesting and you may be in a time of drought. But be humble. Don't get so high-minded. I remember telling a, a, a preacher relative of mine, I said, listen, you, I, I know what it's like to have millions of dollars, well, not millions, but, but hundreds of thousands of dollars come in, and, I, and to have 20 people working for you on staff, and to have a, a million-dollar building, and to have a, a, a $2 million piece of, of, of tract of land that you're going to build on. And I said, and it can be gone that quick. And it wasn't because I did something wrong or something evil. It's just God's way of bringing us through our drought. Yes. And I told him, I said, you better, you better, you better just, just stay humble. Keep it low. Yes. You know what he did? He just went high and mighty. He won't even look at me. He's got thousands of members and all this. And you know what? The sad part is, the sad part is, that God reigns on the just and the unjust. Amen. And you say, well, shoot, I don't have to tithe. I don't have to give. Because God eventually, oh, but but there's some things that I I just won't mess with. That's the reason I won't mess with it. Because I don't, I don't want God proving anything through my loved ones. 